So now we're going to talk about T cell activation. We have naive T cells or naive T lymphocytes in your bloodstream. That you can see them right there. And lymphocytes spend a lot of time in their blood in your bloodstream. They're going to uh, these naive cells are going to enter lymph nodes looking for antigens that match their antigen binding site on their T cell receptors. But before we get there, we have to talk about how antigen presentation occurs and uh, in the lymph nodes. And this is going to start in the tissues, right? Infections typically occur in some tissue, um, skin, uh, GI tract, respiratory tract. So here we have a virus infecting some tissue in the body. So you can see the virus is getting inside cells and it's replicating. Virus particles are outside cells. And so these cells need help because we have an infection at this tissue site. So we need to activate T cells, but we've just got naive T cells circulating in the bloodstream right now. So in tissues, we know that there are two types of phagocytes, macrophages and dendritic cells, and hopefully they are working hard to uh, identify the pathogen using um, some innate immune receptors, such as toll-like receptors, complement receptors, mannose receptors, LPS receptors. They have a whole var a variety of cell receptors that allow them to identify pathogens. And we know with things like the complement receptor, mannose and LPS receptors, those would trigger receptor-mediated endocytosis. So these cells could phagocytose their pathogens. Um, Toll-like receptors will signal into these cells so that they can release cytokines and as we'll see with the dendritic cells, become activated. So uh, these cells, let's say, perform receptor-mediated endocytosis or phagocytosis of the pathogen. That's great. Uh, helping us clear the infection. Is that their job? Well, um, well actually, let me uh, back up here and say dendritic cells, um, we can see here, took the pathogen in two different ways. So we're talking about a viral infection in this instance. Um, viruses can be taken inside of cells via vesicles, that's receptor-mediated endocytosis. And as you'll recall in a previous video, the uh, antigens in the vesicles can be processed and presented on MHC class II molecules. Dendritic cells love to become infected by viruses as well. This is actually a good thing because it allows them to process the uh, cytoplasmic uh, proteins of the virus and present them on MHC class I molecules. So dendritic cells become infected so that they can present their antigens that they have uh, taken in to naive T cells, and we're going to see that shortly. So we've got this phagocytosis occurring in the tissue. Um, macrophages are going to stay here. They are resident. Uh, macrophages typically do not phagocytose and take their cargo with them. Dendritic cells are migratory. So they have taken in pathogens, two different ways you can see here. And what's going to happen is they're going to migrate into the lymphatic tissue. How are they going to get there? It depends on what kind of tissue we're talking about. They can be drained into a lymph fluid that will be carried by a lymphatic vessel to a lymph node. They can also be, um, this could also be occurring in any of the lymphatic tissues like the balt or the malt or the galt. Um, but the uh, end result is the same. Uh, this uh, is going to um, have dendritic cells take the pathogen into the lymphatic tissue. So this uh, dendritic cell, uh, we would say, is when it's in the tissue, uh, it's immature, but when it encounters antigen, it changes such that it can now migrate into the lymphatic tissue. One thing that occurs is uh, upon detection of pathogens, for example, with innate immune receptors such as toll-like receptors, dendritic cells will turn on the production of a uh, chemokine receptor called CCR7. So this receptor uh, binds a chemokine known as CCL21, which is released from cells in lymphatic tissue, stromal cells in lymphatic tissue. So this CCL21, what is it? It's a chemokine, which means that cells that bind the chemokine will be attracted toward its source. And so this dendritic cell is going to enter the lymphatic vessel and it's going to follow the uh, trail of breadcrumbs to the high con areas of high concentration of this uh, chemokine. And so now this dendritic cell has made its way into the um, lymphatic tissue. Right? It is now an activated 
dendritic cell, what does that mean, activated? Well, it means it's going to do a very good job of, of processing, uh, antigen processing and presentation on MHC class 1 and class 2 molecules. Recall that dendritic cells are professional antigen presenting cells. They can present on both MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. When they do this, their job is pre to present to naive T cells and to get them to activate. So now we've got antigen processing and presentation uh, in the lymph node, which is the right place to activate naive T cells. Now, how are the T cells going to get in there? Well, now you have T cells circulating in your bloodstream, um, bind adhesion molecules, which we're not going to cover really, in um, endothelial cells that are uh, in um, lining the blood vessels that lead to lymphatic tissue. These are called high endothelial venules. Those are the um, blood vessels that have the correct adhesion molecules that allow T cells to adhere tightly, and they also actually express the CCR7 chemokine receptor, so they will bind and be attracted to the CCL21 chemokine. That's another way that T cells know, okay, this is my stop, I better get off, and I better go do my job. So T cells circulating in your bloodstream will stop at any number of lymphatic tissue sites because of their strong binding to the endothelial cells and the HEV, the venules, and then also migrate in via uh, being attracted to the chemokine CCL21. Great, so now we have naive T cells in your lymphatic tissue, right? These are T lymphocytes, they're never in the lymphatic tissue, and they're naive, right? What, what's that mean? That means that they have T cell receptors that have a certain antigen binding site, and uh, what's going to occur now is that the antigen binding site, which were created by PDJ recombination, of the T cell receptor alpha protein and beta protein, along with junctional diversity. Um, those antigen binding sites will now check uh, to see if they bind any of the peptides. So it will check on um, the matching, uh, the corresponding MHE1 or 2. I haven't drawn these T cells as CD4 or CD8, but if the cells are that's the one I just drew there. Let's say that is a CD8 positive naive T cell. It's going to check the MHE class 1 uh, peptides, uh, presented peptides. And if it doesn't bind, it moves and it checks the next one. And if it doesn't bind, then that T cell will just go into the lymphatic uh, system and go to the next lymph node, check there those MHE class 1s to see if it recognizes peptides there. And if it doesn't, the T cell will enter the circulatory system again and continue this process. Uh, CD4 positive naive helper T cells, those are going to check uh, MHC class 2 molecules. And so they'll use their T cell receptors to check one. If they don't bind, they go into, they'll check another. Um, any, T, any naive T cell that does recognize that peptide, that naive T cell can become an activated T cell, and we'll cover that activation in the next video. But at least this video, you can see sort of the timing and the location of activation of naive T cells, which occurs um, via an interaction with dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are the primary cell that activates naive T cells via antigen presentation on MHC class 1 and 2 in the lymphatic tissue.